All right, everybody, howdy. I did a subnetting video for you guys, and I had a couple of questions come in about supernetting or route summarization, route aggregation. So I thought we'd do a little tiny example of some route summarization. So here we've got a couple of routers. Call that router number one and that router number two. And to start off with, why don't we go ahead and build our routing tables? So on router number one, we can see that we'd have four directly connected networks for these guys downstream. So we'd have, we're doing some RIT examples. So the 4.0 network slash 24. The 5 network. The 6 network and the 7. Well, um, we also got this link right here, and this is what I'll call maybe the upstream side. Now we can see that this guy here is actually the 10 network, and that's because these networks down here might be actually used for hosts. And since we don't like to burn our host address space for point-to-point -point links between routers, it's very common to see slash 30s being used and uh, routes that don't have anything to do with your, your actual address space. So we'll add this directly connected route also. Let me see, we got the 1.0 network slash 30. And then to complete router number one's routing table, we've got the internet out here, so we need a default route. So maybe we would do a static route that looks something like this. And then we would have a via router number two or 10.0.1.2. Whoops, there we go. Well, what would the routing table for router number two look like? Well, I forgot to give, we'll give this guy, you know, let's pretend there's a router up here and we'll make this the 10.0.2 network. So router number two would have directly connected networks as well. Uh, 0, 1, 0, slash 30, and 10, 0, 2, slash 30. So those are the two directly connected networks. And if we pretend that this is R3, we would probably have a default route via R3. I didn't bother to give it addressing at this point. And then we got to figure out a way to get to all these guys down here. So we would also have some static routes down to these other networks. And so we would have to put in four static routes for all of these guys here. And I'm going to do some shorthand here. I'm going to, well, I have enough room. Can you guys see this over right over there? I guess you can. Like this. Almost there. Okay, so what we've got here is, is these static routes here are all pointing to router number one downstream. So the way that router number two gets to uh, networks one, two, or four, five, six, and seven, they're all via router number one. So something that they share is this forwarding interface. Now that's one of our first giveaways that we might have the ability to do some route aggregation or route summarization. All right, so before we, before we actually do the summarization, let me point something out here. Um, if I have lots and lots of routes downstream, then this routing table will actually grow quite a bit. So router number two's routing table would get really, really large. So this technique that we're about to do for this small group of networks will work just fine for a much larger set, and that is in fact what we do all the time. All right, so we know that we have the potential for aggregation because we've got all of the same forwarding interfaces here. Um, the other nice thing, or the thing that makes this all work, is that these are 
contiguous address space uh, networks. So they all can be grouped together. Well, let's just sort of examine a couple of these here first. These networks here are slash 24s. Well, what happens if we were just, just to do slash 25? Well, it turns out that those two would be grouped together and that those two would be grouped together. Now, I'll show you proof of that here in just a minute, but uh, if I do, if I keep going with that idea, if I do, these would be slash, I'm sorry, did I say slash 25s? I mean slash 23s. If I do slash 22s, then these will be grouped together because remember when we're subnetting, we're stealing bits into the host portion. When we supernet, we steal bits the other way. We steal bits into the network portion, making the networks larger and a greater number of hosts per network. So what we find out we can do is we can take all of these networks and instead of having all of these networks individually represented, what I'm going to tell you is that I can do this. I can get rid of all of those addresses just by changing, or all of those network entries, just by changing the mask to a slash 22. And you see what happened to my routing table. I managed to um, shrink my routing table considerably just by manipulating the mask here. All right. So that's what happens, and that's the impact. Where's your proof? Okay. Well, let's do an example. So what I'm going to do is take this network address space, and I'm just going to expand the third octet here. So the third octet being four, one, two, three, let's see, we got uh, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, and then 4, right? So that's what this looks like in binary, and maybe I'll do the last octet as well. And then we've got our mask. If we're at slash 24, then the last two octets would look like this here. Now we know from our subnetting videos that when we AND, what would happen here is that anything that was in the range of 0 to 255, when ANDed with all zeros down here, would give me the 4 network as the address, as the network address. Now when I say that I want to steal a bit from the network portion, if I steal one bit this way, what that means is that this changes to a 0. So now let's see what happens if I take a sample address. I'm just going to erase this here. Well, we already know that this group of addresses is collected together because we used a 255.255.255.0 network address space. And now what I'm telling you is that if I change the mask, then my range of address is actually 4.0 to 5.255. So let's prove this. Let me give you an example address. So let's use, oh, I don't know, 5.130. Okay? So what that means is that right in here I have to change my host address space and 130 looks something like this like that okay well if I do the ending process I get 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 well what's this address what's this in binary it's 1.100 what is it in base 10? It's the 4 network. So that means that when I do, when I steal one bit from the network portion, that the group of addresses that are supernetted or aggregated together is now in the range of 4.0 to 5.255. Well, I said that I want to do a slash 22. What happens there? 
When we do slash 22, it actually groups more networks together. So let's change this now. Let's make this, we're going to change our mask again. <clears throat> so this would be, it was a slash 24 out here, now it's a slash 22, because I got rid of two of the, the ones in the, the subnet mask. Now let's actually test something like this. Let's test 7 dot, oh, I don't know, let's go 63, okay? Well, seven looks like this. And no cheating. Sixty three looks like this. Well, I stole one bit back again, so now I was slash 24, slash 23, slash 22. Let's do the ending process again. And these guys again will be all zeros. So that means that by stealing ones, or stealing uh, space back from the network portion, what I did was I changed my network range again. This slash 22 that I use right here in router number two groups addresses from 192.168.4.0 to 192.168.7.255. And that's a really simple, really small example of how supernetting works to collapse our routing address space and group networks together. I hope that helped. See you next time.